that you have that allows you to attract this income in the first place, thanking God for his grace and making it all making it all happen. for another subject. <laughs> Maybe if the older, any of the older, quest, older, older youth and kids have questions, I'll try and answer a few questions. <coughs> if there's any questions. Can you please to ask any questions if you can? Yes. Why do you need to well, that's a very good question. Uh, we don't, but eventually we, we want it. In other words, how many times do you want to live on the earth? How many lives? Five, ten, twenty, a hundred, thousand? What do you think? How many would be enough? You don't know, right. But at some point, you feel it's enough. Because you've done everything to do. You've done it. Dozens of times, hundreds of times, and when you feel you're ready to move on to something more refined, more spiritual, which is what exists after liberation. So it's just it's a natural longing to experience something of a more refined nature that eventually everyone feels. So that's why we want liberation. It was said another way. Uh, what grade are you in? Six. six. Okay. Well, how many times would you want to go through grade six? Is once enough? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that gives you a sense of it. Well, when you've done something, you, you've done it. You, you don't feel like doing it again. So even though we start over in each life, we don't start over totally. We carry the intelligence we are forward. So. We don't want to keep repeating. We naturally don't want to keep repeating. We want to do something more than we've done before. So eventually, the only way to do that is to move on into the inner world, the heavenly world, and start doing things there. Tamil expert to explain why Tamil chooses the word Virdu. <laughs> but it, it means liberation <coughs> means breaking the cycle of reincarnation. It's called samsara. In other words, normally we're born, we live through life, we die, we spend some time in the inner worlds, and then we're reborn. That's the Hindu idea. So to break out of that cycle is called moksha or vidya. So we're we're moving closer to God. You know that could be why it's called vidya. So we're, we're moving closer to God now. We're, God is at a distance when we're in physical consciousness. To most people, it takes a great saint like Yoga Swami to not feel distant from God, even though we're in a physical body. God wasn't distant to him. To most of us, being in a physical body creates a sense of distance from God. So to break through that cycle where we don't need a physical body brings us closer to God, which we could say is closer to God. Yes. Uh, Prabhupada said Okay, you got the question. <laughs> um, what is the difference between uh, us as um, humans and animals? Like mm -hmm. Spiritually. Mm -hmm. Well, animals can only... An animal... Well, we all know computers, right? Yes. Everybody here is young enough to really know computers. 
<laughs> and generally, if you have a problem with your computer, what do you do? You go to the youngest person in the room. Right? Usually when you have a problem, you go to the oldest person in the room. But the younger you are, the more you know about computers. So you know computer programs. A computer program, when it's written, can be written in such a way that it only does one thing. There's no options. It always does the same thing. It doesn't give you choices. Lots of programs are like that. Well, animals are like that. They have a computer program in them that only allows them to do one thing. A cat is a cat, and a dog is a dog. And the cat won't act like a dog, and the dog won't act like a cat. There's no choice. So the cat is sleeping quietly, and hears a loud noise, and what will it do? No, it'll run and hide. Anybody have a cat? No cat lovers. <laughs> Anybody have a dog? Dog, okay. Well, a cat, since you don't have one, you don't know. We have lots of cats. A cat, if a cat is just so happy sitting there, so blissful. It hears a loud noise that has no choice but to run and hide. It can't ask, what is that noise? <clears throat> Am I threatened by that noise? Do I need to run and hide? No, it doesn't have that ability to analyze the noise. Oh, it can only respond according to its program, which says run and hide. A dog hears a loud noise. What does it do? And it goes to the dog. It barks. Yes, a dog barks. It doesn't run and hide normally. And maybe some dogs are running hide. <laughs> but usually it'll stand there and bark. Why? Because it's protecting the home, and it feels its duty is to protect the home from the noise. So it's trying to scare away the noise. Don't come here. I'm a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is my home. So it has no choice. It barks. So the difference between humans and animals is humans have a choice. They have a very complicated, sophisticated <coughs> computer program that allows them to analyze things and make choices. Okay, this is a noise, what should I do? Do I need to hide? Do I need to make a noise? What's the appropriate response to the, to the noise? So we have a choice. We don't respond to every noise the same way as an animal. So we're much more intellectually developed, but we also can look inward and find our soul nature. Soul nature is just another word for our pure life force. Everyone has a soul because they have a pure life force within them. But if you find the deepest source of life within you, that's the soul, called Uyu in common. And if you find the essence of that, that's Uyu Uyu, right? God as the life of life. So we can look within and find that. Animals have life, but they can't look within and find it. You can't do that kind of sophisticated idea, and that's what yoga is. Yoga is looking inside ourselves, finding our life in its most subtle form, and then finding the essence of that, which is God. So we can do that, and if we do that, find God within ourselves, and we work through all our karma, then we have, we'll have achieved moksha. Yeah. Um, so if your like, house is full of um, gods and you do prayers every day, would it be the same benefit as going to the temple? Not if it's a strong temple. The temple is stronger. You know, we could open up a temple. We could notice there's a bakery, right? A own bakery. So we could build a temple there, we could rent it and build a temple. But even after a year, the temple wouldn't have a lot of strength to it. So temples have to, to be strong, stronger than the home. They have to have existed for a number of years and have priests there regularly. So a strong temple is better than worshiping at home. There's, there's more spiritual energy there. It's like the difference between uh, a small waterfall and a big waterfall. 
we have some nice waterfalls on in Hawaii. I always thought they were very nice. Then I went to Niagara Falls last year. <laughs> Any of you been to Niagara Falls? Okay. <laughs> and then you know what a small waterfall is. So Niagara Falls is like a, and we're talking about it's like a, the most powerful temple. It's really powerful. But to be that powerful, it has to have existed a long time. And I've had priests really worshiping there since then. <coughs> Oh, the most powerful temples are in India because they've been there the longest. They're the most like Niagara Falls. And then temples in Sri Lanka have been there not quite as long, but some of them have been there a very long time. And then you get temples in other countries. So they're not as strong. So the older a temple it is, the more priests that are there worshiping, the stronger it can be, and the stronger, better it is than being in your home. So that's the idea. The temple can be much stronger than your home needs to have been around a while. Yes? Um, does it affect the you are, know, like, affect how you pray, so if you're like a meat eater or you're vegetarian, does it like affect how you pray? It, yes, uh, type of diet you have, if you're vegetarian or non-vegetarian, affects how you pray. The simple, there's lots of reason for being vegetarian, but the one we use, which we feel is the one that no one can, it's the most important, shall we say, also the least challengeable is that when we eat meat, it, or we're in, taking in an animal, it stimulates the animal in us. That's the Hindu idea of diet. Even if we have too many, uh, cur too many uh, chilies, it kind of upsets us. Or too much coffee all day, it can upset us. Too much is called rajasic food. And meat is called tamasic food. So it stimulates the animal in us, meaning the tendency to get angry or the tendency to be fearful. And it, it makes us less sensitive to the energies that come from the temple. So definitely it's what would you say? It's, uh, you know the difference between a slow internet connection and a fast one? <laughs> so slow internet connection is like if you, you need a lot of meat. It's just the information comes, but it's so slow and you don't get as much of it. And fast internet connection is the idea of you're really hooked up to the deities in a much better way. So the diet does make a difference. <coughs> But of course, it's not required. You just don't have to be vegetarian, but it's preferred. It's similar to athletics, if you're or dancing. If you're very serious about athletics or dancing, you're required to follow a certain kind of diet, right? You just can't eat anything you want. You won't do well at that athletic or dancing event. You have to get your body into a certain shape. So Hinduism is the same, it's not the body, it's the spiritual sensitivity. It improves with a more refined diet. Yes? Does an animal have consciousness or something like that? No, an animal doesn't have karma because it has no choice. It can't do the wrong thing. You only have karma if there's a right thing to do and a wrong thing to do and you do the wrong thing. An animal has no choice. It has to do what it's programmed to do. It never does the wrong thing. It just fulfills its nature. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad the two of you are in front. It's easy to hear all the questions. Well, <laughs> that question. Is an animal uh, therefore more spiritual than that? because they actually follow what is right. <laughs> no, no, animal is not at all spiritual. Animal can be content. It looks like spirituality. You get a sleeping cat, it looks very content. But it's not really spiritual. It's very self-centered. <clears throat> you, you put out food, an animal is not going to share the food with a stranger cat. You know, 